evening and welcome to the 2021 Senior Dance Arts Capstone presentation. I am Tiffany Quinn, faculty member and proud alum of the Howard University Dance Arts Program. Thank you for joining us in this culminating moment in rites of passage. The Senior Capstone Project comes out of the Senior Seminar course, which is designed to prepare our students as they transition into the professional world. We have spent the last nine months career planning and building, connecting with current artists and alum in the profession, and of course, creating what you will see this evening. The capstone highlights the students' areas of specialty, such as performance, choreography, and or research. Most importantly, it encourages the students to develop a presentation that is representative of their time with us these past four years, the legacy they will leave, and their impact beyond these sacred grounds. This year, we have had to reimagine this experience due to the pandemic, of course. The students have been stretched to become directors, cinematographers, editors, and more in order to showcase their work. Thankfully, the virtual space has allowed us to still present a program of quality and also provides a broader reach than ever before. I would like to thank you, our viewing audience, for your support, our chair, Dr. Afosua Abiola, our coordinator, Professor Royce Zachary, the Dance Arts and Department of Theater Arts faculty and staff, the Sankofa production team, choreographer Darrell Moultrie, our alumni for your commitment to preserve the connection and legacy, and our students for your work and dedication to tonight's performance. Lastly, I must thank the Laura Bethany Strong, whom you will hear from at the end of the program. She is a former student returning after 20 years of an extensive and notable career. She has spent this semester assisting, teaching, nurturing, mentoring, and providing invaluable lessons and opportunities for the dance arts students. This is truly a full circle moment, and I am proud to officially welcome her along with J. Kayla, Jillian, Geneva, Naomi, and Siani into the alumni circle. May you go forth and be great in all you do, continuing the work and maintaining the standard. Peace and blessings. I've come to a realization out of all the lessons here out of all the lessons out of here, all the lessons here I learned that I am worthy of all the things I am success beauty and wisdom I am filled with every perfect imperfection and I did not know this and before, I did not but, know this before. and I did not know this before but I am everything I dreamed to be. I owned what I am afraid of and who I am became clearer. When life turned upside down, I've let my resilience lead the way. I've come to a realization. I learned that who I am and who I am becoming is not far from excellence. And it never occurred to me that in the end, I would answer all the questions. I would understand every moment and feel the fullness, and feel the fullness of the end meeting the beginning.
You are beautiful. You are smart. You are funny. You are kind. You are unique. You are worthy of love and affection. You are never too much, and you are always enough. Worth more than the numbers on the scale, or the hair product you use, or the shoes you wear. More than how many girls wish they were you, or how many guys wish they had you. More than the price tags on your clothes, or the percentage at the top of your the number of followers you have on Twitter. Your worth surpasses all earthly things. Whether you're head cheerleader or a high school dropout, whether you're Miss Popular or you've never had anyone you could call a friend, whether you love yourself and love your life or you can't stand to look in the mirror and you feel as if everything in your life is falling apart, read about the women in the Bible. Esther, Ruth, Martha, Mary. These women changed the world forever and inside of you. Each and every one of you is a woman with that same power and that same strength and that same world-changing capability. And your responsibility is to find that woman and to set that woman free. This is who you are. And please, don't you forget it. Many people wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. When I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my step, the curl of my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man the fellows stand or fall down on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They try so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breasts, the grace of my style. I'm a woman, phenomenally. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palms of my hands, the need for my care, because I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman, all oh, you women and me. From the time a woman is born, from the start of transitioning from a girl to a woman, 
She holds beautiful characteristics out of this world like no other. She is strong-minded. She is soft-hearted. She has integrity. She has a balance in her life. She's confident and caring and not afraid to stand up. She is tenderness. She has the power to nurture. She is the reason we continue to evolve. She is the representation of hard work and dedication, even when the odds are against. Dear woman, you, you are like no other. Continue being you. I remember the time when Jillian told me, she says, Mom, um, I really want to go here. And I said, okay. Um, and it was the best decision, best decision. To drop her off at school, it was, um, it was hard to let her go. Um, yes, I cried a little bit, especially on our way home after leaving her. Um, but I was also very excited for her. Always you have fear for your kids, the unknown, when they're away from you, you know, you're the protector, you want to be there for them. But, but I, I knew, knew she, she would be okay. Prepared. And I knew she would flourish. I knew she was ready. That gave me a sense of comfort. She was the last one. And we, my husband and I, were going to be empty nesters now. Raising three wonderful women. It, it makes, makes me, me really proud. proud. It's been the highlight of my life. You want to emulate positive male models for your daughters so that they know what good is in the world and what treating them good means. Uh, but it also means that uh, they have confidence in their dad. They have love for their dad. And they know that they're loved. Where did the time go? We did things, created new experiences, and made lasting memories, but it's even more valuable now seeing them as grown-ups, pursuing their own dreams, living their own lives. Legacy is leaving someone something worthwhile to carry on in your name or in your honor. I am a Howard alum, and now I have three daughters that are Howard University students and alum. This family legacy makes an impression not only in the lives of others, but a profoundly positive indentation on the life of the giver. She started off as our bean, uh, taking off for Howard University. And then I think of her growth, uh, her commitment to excellence in her schoolwork, 4.0 student, uh, and maintain that again throughout high school and into college, and then pushing herself to excel and go beyond anything we could have imagined. And the sky is still not the limit. I mean, there's more for her. She's become more socially and actively conscious, taking a stand and definitively choosing who she allows into her space 
and her life. It's very inspiring. So when I think of Jillian now as a Howard University senior, I see a young woman that's ready for the world, that's ready to put her stamp on the world and say, here I come. It's more than her beauty and her grace. It's more than her knowledge and how she touches people and shares with people around her. It is the whole package. So Jillian Clifford, it's an oyster opening up and there's just a wonderful pearl inside this oyster that, that was just waiting to be cultivated. As she nears the end of her senior year, she is unwavering in pursuit of her dreams and I can't wait to see her star shine brighter. Wait, give yourself, wait, more time. give yourself more time. Wait, wait it's not your time yet. Wait, it's, not wait, your time it's yet. only the beginning. Wait, it's only the beginning. Wait, it's not your time yet. Wait your turn, they say. Ooh, I hate that word. I hate it because it's the truth. I hate it because waiting means I'm not where I want to be. Waiting means that I have so much more to wait for. I mean, there's nothing wrong with waiting. It's just waiting leads to overthinking and thinking leads to other things. And in reality, I'm afraid. I'm afraid of waiting. I'm afraid of myself. I'm afraid of the uncertainty we call our future. I am afraid that one day I will wake up and realize that I miss my time. I miss what could have been, what should have been, would have, could have, should have. Ain't that what they always say? I constantly feel at the back of my mind, where is my good time? When will I be able to exhale? Free all my pain, free all my worries. When will my time come? What if it never comes? Why is it that when we want something, we have to wait? Wait, you're not old enough. Wait, it's not your turn. Wait this, wait that. I am tired of waiting. I am tired of the word wait. I don't want to wait. But the thing is, if I don't wait, I can't get where I need to go. It's like, I know I have to wait my turn and I know I have to wait so I can learn. And I know I have to wait for my time, but it just feels like if time is an illusion, and I am stuck in time, does that make what I am waiting for an illusion too? Yeah, that's just something to think about. It's like, fear is what has kept me up at night. Fear is my overwhelming emotion that has hindered me from doing what makes me happy. For so long, fear has been my best friend. Fear has kept me out of trouble, but always seems to put me in messy situations. And now, for the first time ever, I don't want to be afraid anymore. What if I'm done waiting? What if I'm ready? Wait, no, let's drop the what if. I am ready. I am abundant. I am magnificent. I am me. And I am not afraid.
You never said I'm leaving. You never said goodbye. You were gone before I knew it, and only God knew why. A million times I needed you. A million times I cried. If love alone could have saved you, you never would have died. In life I loved you dearly, in death I love you still. In my heart you hold a place that no one could ever fill. It broke my heart to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of me went with you the day God took you home. Brooklyn Bridge Park was my dad's favorite place. We came here a lot as a family and shared our fondest memories with each other. so angry, I want to yell and scream. I want to wake up from this horrible dream. I want to throw things, lie down, pound and flail, rant, rave, and tantrum, deafen the world with my will. If I stage this fierce rebellion, will you be returned to me? To calm my broken heart, oh how I want this possibility. Anger won't bring you back, but it's okay to express and feel. Expressing the emotions of grief, all of them help us to heal. We're, we're,
are never allow as black people to just be average. With everything we do, we have to be exceptional. We have to go above and beyond. And when you're with your fellow peers, um, and I'm thinking for myself, if you're not exceptional, you feel like, dang, I'm not doing enough, or I'm not here. I'm, I'm not, I'm not what I, where I should be. And it's like, did God even make me to be the stupendously ridiculous person? And not just me. That's brought me a lot of pain because it's constantly trying to live up to a standard and prove people that don't really matter that as a black person I'm capable of making. to be normalized mm. i don't want i'm, I'm kind of tired of like black being um exoticized and uh made so like abstract sometimes and so black joy is definitely a thing and um it's characterized by being black because like we don't get to experience joy regularly and that's what people don't understand like we really need to normalize black being human and black just being black and a black person being just as average not average but regular seeing successful as a white person so black joy is definitely characterized because it's so special it's meaningful because we are cold and tormented and society has this way of making us feel like you know we have to work so hard for our joy and our happiness in a sense black joy is characterized by a black person having freedom of themselves and you know being black and enjoying being black and not dreadfully being black mm. because it's really hard to be black in this society sometimes we will not let our minds be used we will not let our minds be used in this wicked world we will band together we will make the human family one once more. We will live in a land teeming with prosperity. With purity, common good. With milk and honey. They say, for unto us a child is born. A son is given. But our child is missing. Plastered onto every lamppost and stop sign across America. No less the world.
Dr. Sherelle Berryman Johnson, the founder of the Howard University Dance Program and mentor to the many dancers who have come before. Full circle. It's the beginning to an end, to begin again. J. Kayla. Jillian, Geneva, Naomi, and Siani. Dear woman, as you ascend into the next chapter of your lives, remain cloaked in who you are and whose you are. You have been bequeathed a lineage of fearless brilliance. As told by them, I expect you to exemplify boundless sophistication that illuminates your significance in this very moment. The world is waiting on you. So never, ever compromise your creativity. Black roses defy nature's law. Continue to be the tip of the spear of innovation. Don't ever forget that it is obligatory that you graduating bison commit the following to your muscle memory black is multifaceted it is a myriad of blended experiences that will usher you onward and upward in howard excellence that you shall not just excel but disrupt the very position of injustice and create pathways for those yet to be born the 2021 graduating class of Howard University dance majors would like to first thank Professor Quinn. We have been privileged to be under the tutelage of such an amazing and phenomenal professor. Next, we would like to thank Professor Douglas, Professor Ruffin, Professor Starnes, and Mr. Thorne, our astounding production team. We could not have done this without you. Thank you for your time, effort, and guidance. A special acknowledgement to the chairman, coordinator, and faculty of the dance arts program. To my brother in dance, Darrell Grand Moultrie, thank you for emboldening your intrepid vision of exquisite creativity. Last, but certainly not the least, we would like to thank you, the audience, for your presence and support of the spring full circle virtual showcase. Be safe, social distance, and continue to wear your masks. Peace and blessings. <laughs>